chamber board. They're our ambassadors known as our chairman's council. They are represented you know, from the city, from the county. Benny Carter is on our chairman's council and Benny is a county commissioner. There's lots of people here and they're here because they support organizations within the community. And we've always said that the nonprofits in our area are definitely supported once someone knows, like Trey said, your story and what you're all about. So we appreciate the fact that they've all come today to learn more and for some of them maybe learn for the first time. So please tell us a little bit more and then we're going to officially cut the ribbon and welcome you to your new holiday. Well, thank you. Thank you guys. I'm so we, we are all so thankful and grateful for everybody who's <laughs> shown up. This is amazing. And we have some very, um, very, lots of very special people here, but even some more special people I'm going to introduce to you in a moment, which we are blown away that they would come all the way up here from Atlanta to be part of this. Um, but my name's Nadine, this is our staff and board, and Seth uh, Harris over here is our vice president, and Mary and Amber and James and Ariel and Willie Myers, our local hero. Um, we are all part of this board. Um, we have some more board members here, forgive me. Wade Pope over here, absolutely. Troy Haas, uh, Tate Sams over here. So we have a lot of, and Dr. Nedra Jackson, how could I forget? So we have amazing board members here. Um, my father is here, which uh, over there with the Atlanta Braves hat. He's the one who set the example for me to um, to give back. Uh, my whole life, that's been an example he set. And then my husband is here, Pete, over there. So wonderful. Pete. So uh, very briefly, um, first of all, I'm so thankful for this weather. It said it was going to pour rain. I had a discussion with God, and I said, not today, please. I'm your daughter, please. And, and he, he proved himself real. So there we go. Um, in 2016, we brought a group of people to Guatemala to do a out-of-the-box therapeutic recovery project. These people were people with opiate use disorder, including my own son. And I said, if we're going to do something as dramatic as this disease is, then I need to take them out and do something dramatic. So we built a school in an underprivileged village in Guatemala, and every single participant of that trip to this day will tell you how life-changing it was. The problem is they had to come back to their United States, into their county, back to the same old. And so we knew we had to do something different. Not everybody wanted to do 12-step meetings, although 12-step meetings are amazing. We have them here, but we had people that wanted something different. So we started with the Hope Dealer Support Group meetings where we focused on what's right with us and what we're grateful for. Um, we cast dreams and visions, and that was more of our meeting. They put us on intervention, showing, hey, they're doing something different in the, the community. So we were all on A&E for our little moment in time, weren't we there? <laughs> then, um, then it evolved into training people. It's, you know, not to just hold the gift of recovery to ourselves, but training others to um, be uh, effective peer advocates for recovery. So. Uh, we then started classes where we did that. Um, actually had a time where I trained people to become state certified counselors, but that moved into peer support recovery because we found peer support recovery to be more effective. Um, then into those classes in 2019, 2020, some of my students said, hey, they've got this thing called an RCO, a recovery community organization, and they're peer led and they're supposed to be in every county in the state. Can we start one? And I said, sure. <laughs> so I never knew uh, what we were getting into. It's been quite an undertaking. And this is where the Rock uh, Recovery Organization Cherokee County came into fruition um, from, started from Hope Dillers. But we could not have done it without the support and guidance and direction and vision of the Georgia Council for Recovery and that is our uh, office in Atlanta that has, I believe, 42 recovery community organizations around the state now. And they offer us a tremendous amount of support. They uh, supply the training and education for our state certified peer recovery coaches who are here. And we are able to offer everything here that you could think of that would support someone who wants to maintain a lifestyle of recovery. So when someone comes out of treatment and they come home and they're like, where do I go? 
back to the same old bar, back to the same old whatever, you know, depression. Well, at least they now know they have a place here where they can be supported without judgment, um, fully accepted with love, and um, a place where we can support whatever they need to maintain the recovery. This is our contribution to our county to make our county a healthier place keeping people from yes, yes. setbacks and keeping our county healthier. But as you can see, it is a huge team effort, huge team effort by so many people here. So um, also people who are in crisis, they're not gonna be hanging out here because this is for people committed to re recovery. However, we've served over, gosh, probably 3,000 people now in crisis because we immediately get them funding and get them what they need to go to treatment at uh, a higher level of care facility that would not be appropriate here. So anyone in active substance use or anyone in crisis, we refer them and get them immediately to the appropriate level of care so that they're taken care of so they don't end up harming themselves or others in the community. Um, so we work hard to keep our community safe. But at this point, I would love to introduce, we are so honored. I mean, these are two very, very busy women. Um, but uh, Neil Campbell, who is the director, uh, the executive director of the Georgia Council for Recovery, used to be called Georgia Council on Substance Abuse. And Neil, if you could come and say a few words. And then her incoming, uh, she served for 25 years. 15 in this organization, yeah. 15, yeah, and yeah. then Marissa will be the incoming ED. Yeah. Incoming I'm ED. Retiring. And all of the RCOs are under them. And these, these are the guys who, people who make it happen down at the state capitol and everywhere, so. Katie, thank you. I wasn't expected to say anything, but thank you so much, <laughs> Cherokee County. I'm, my name is Neil Campbell. I'm a person in recovery. Uh, for me, that means it's been 32 years since I've had my last drink. <laughs> Old. I am a grandmother of five, and I'm going to be at the end of this fiscal year, in the end of June, I'm going to be transitioning out as executive director. But it's my pleasure. I looked back, you know, I'm having the opportunity to look back at my last 15 years at the council, and one of the things I put on my bio right away was Neil is committed to growing Georgia's recovery communities. And so that happened. <laughs> we grew recovery communities all over the state, and it's commitments like you've made, Nadine, and your your people to, to facilities like this and to neighborhoods like this that are going to make a difference. Because recovery happens in communities where people can access their supports. And we go around the state and we ask people all the time, what keeps you well? What keeps you in recovery? And they say things, they don't say a 10 minute unit of service. They don't say, you know, having a, the right assessment. What they tell us is faith, family, friends, hope, giving back. Those are the things that keep people well. It's what kept me well. Um, I am a 12-stepper, but I support all pathways to recovery. And when I was in early recovery, my sponsor used to say, when I was sitting on that pity pot that some of us do when we're in early recovery and things aren't going our way, he would say, go out and do something esteemable. So that notion that you went and built for a community is just so right on because it changes your brain chemistry, right? It, when you give back, you get that shot of oxytocin in your brain that says, I'm worthy. And most of us who struggle with the substance use disorder don't feel we're worthy. And we keep using for that reason. So this is gonna save lives. I have no doubt, I know it is. We People tell us every day, if I didn't have some place where I can just go and be me, where I didn't have to get diagnosed, I didn't have to get evaluated, I could just come in and sit down and have a cup of, it was really good coffee, Nathan, by the way. <laughs> I got a good cup of coffee. And just be with people who are gonna love me until I love myself. That's what this is about. So I am so overjoyed to be here. Thank you for inviting us. And I, I don't know if Larissa wants to say a few words, but Larissa is, um, whew, I'm so grateful for her because of her in my leadership team, I'm able to retire. We have 46 staff and I have a leadership team that I would put up against anybody, sorry, even yours, you have a good one. But um, they are so committed to this work. Um, we have 46 people who are in recovery that work with us every day to do this. So thank you so much. I'm honored by, by being here. I'm really glad. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do you want to say anything here?
Sure, yeah, I'm, uh, I also wasn't expecting to say anything, but my name is Larissa Guerrero. I'm a person in long-term recovery, and what that means to me is that it's been over eight years since I've used any drugs or alcohol. Um, due to my recovery, I have opportunities to be here today. Um, and, uh, this morning I was at the CARES Academy. We were training the 52nd cohort of certified peer specialists. So to go from there to here, it's just been a huge hope shot today. Um, this is beautiful, what, what you all are building here, what the whole community is building here. So thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys so much. And, uh, Cheryl's, uh, Frank Reynolds wanted to be here, but he told me he had to be at Dobbins. Um, does he have someone who's saying a brief word? Tommy or no? Okay, I, I thought, he sent, thought he sent someone to do that. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, well, I just want to acknowledge we really appreciate Officer Tommy Holt, who has been a friend of ours. He's helping with the co-responder program in this county. So when someone has a police call, he could probably tell you more about that, but where they will have a mental health professional to be there along with them. So the hopes that people could get treatment over incarceration and just make our community a healthier, safer place. So um, we thank you guys so much for being here. Um, if you have not gotten a tour of both levels and everything we have to offer, please do. And uh, there's a coffee and uh, Italian soda bar in there to grab a drink. And um, thank you again so much for coming. We appreciate our community. <laughs>